This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Hey guys, Kinsey here. Before we hop into today's show, I want to quickly let you know that today's episode is brought to you in part by Studio Sweden. Studio Sweden has the most gorgeous collection of headphones and earbuds for Apple products. I have been constantly using my rose gold and white earbuds and I could not love them more. If you are interested in learning more about Studio Sweden or grabbing a pair of earbuds for yourself or somebody for the holiday season, you can get 15% off your order with the code SHECREATE. Creates business. That's all capital letters and all one word. 15% off using the code She Creates Business at studio, S U D I O, Sweden.com. Thanks so much, Studio Sweden. Well, hey there, and happy Tuesday. Welcome to She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate you being with me here, wherever you are. Happy Thanksgiving week to those of us in the United States. Um, And happy just holiday season to those of us not in the United States, because it's just kind of a time of the year where we're thankful for a lot of things and grateful to be spending time with family. And you're my family. So thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, You guys, if you've been following along with me on Instagram or on the podcast itself, you know that it, it is, in fact, Tuesday, November 21st, which means I have a huge announcement for you. And I don't have a big lead in or a huge introduction to this because I'm just so excited to tell you. So here we go. Today is the grand opening of the opt-in shop as well as the relaunch of my website. Who cares about the relaunch of my website? I'm only saying that because I opened up the opt-in shop along with it. And I am so thrilled to bring this to you. This episode is all about what the opt-in shop is and how it's going to actually serve your wedding business. And let me get right into it. So If you have heard the word opt-in before and you hear what the name of the shop is, then you're like, oh, I hear you, girl. I feel like I know where you're going with this. If not, I'm going to get into that. But the opt-in shop is a collection of done for you. Operative word here, friends. They are done for you. Content upgrades and email list opt-ins for your wedding business. That is right. These email list opt-ins and content upgrades are specifically made for wedding professionals for your couples. These these are not for other business owners. This is not for like business building tools. You're not going to find like a social media planner. This is for actually our couples, you guys, to put on our wedding business websites and to build our email lists. And I created this opt-in shop because I needed this opt-in shop. I am have been struggling with building my own email list over at vistaviewevents.com because I don't have time to create content upgrades or opt-ins and but I have the ideas, right? Like I have all the ideas in my head and I know what I need to do. We all know what we need to do. We're not stupid and we're amazing business owners, but we don't have the time and we also don't really have the wherewithal to just sit down and create a bunch of things, right? So I did it for you. I partnered with a designer. I gave her all of my ideas. I just said, you know what? I'm going to do this and I'm going to share it with everybody. I gave her all of my ideas. I just, you know, threw up ideas into a huge Google Doc and Google Drive and she created all of these opt-ins for me. And I think you're going to love them. In fact, I know you're going to love them. So what are these things exactly? If you haven't heard the word opt-in before or content upgrade before, let me back up and let me share with you what that actually is. So they're essentially the same, but they kind of function in two different ways. So an email list opt-in or opt-in for short, you might hear of it called a freebie. You might hear it called a like a tripwire product. It is something valuable for your ideal client client or your audience that you give away for free in exchange for their email address, their email address, their email address. Same thing with a content upgrade. However, a content upgrade typically goes into a blog post. So I am a venue owner. Let's say I blog about 10 things you need to ask your venue before you sign the contract Then I put in a content upgrade that is something I'm going to tell you about in a second from the opt-in shop. And after that person has already read all of my 10 tips, it's all great free information, they can choose to give me their email address to opt in to whatever content upgrade I have included in that blog post. Both with the content upgrade and the email list opt-in, again, they're the same. They just kind of have different functionalities that you are giving something away for free in exchange for an email list or an email address. Now, 
Why do we need to build our email address? If you're kind of hanging around the online business world or you're interested in marketing like I am, you know that people are always saying the money is in the list. Build your email list. The email list is the only thing that you really own, including your website, especially if it's self-hosted. Um, we don't own social media, right? Like Instagram and Facebook could like go the way of MySpace tomorrow. And do you guys remember MySpace? We'll talk about it later, sidebar. Um, but anyway, they could go the way of MySpace tomorrow and then all of your fans and followers are bye-bye. You don't own them anymore. Like they're gone. How would you communicate with people? And these were the questions I was really asking myself because Instagram has been really big for my podcast as well as my venue. And I've been asking, I've been, you know, I do okay. And I do pretty well and I'm pretty proud of the way I've been building my list for the podcast, but I am totally not proud of the way I've been building the list, my list, my email list for Vista View events, my venue. So that is where the, you know, that's really where um, this opt-in shop came from was something that I needed for myself that I started creating with my designer. Shout out to Jillian, love you. And I just said, okay, this needs to be for other people. This needs to be for everybody because I can't be the only person feeling this way. And what has really been driving me crazy about trainings and courses and people teaching this stuff is that they teach you the strategy or not even the strategy. They teach you the idea and then maybe give you some strategy. So like the idea is you need to build your email list and they go into all of these great reasons why you need to be build your email list and all of these like great case studies and examples of people building their email list, but they don't actually give you the mechanics. They give you some strategy like, okay, you need an email lit provider. So you need ConvertKit or you need ActiveCampaign or you need MailChimp. And you're like, awesome. So I go out and get it because you said I should on this course. I still have no idea what I need to do because there's no mechanics behind it. They give you, you know, a free template for an editorial calendar for your email list, but you're like, awesome. I still don't have anything to put on this editorial calendar. So it just becomes a waste of space. Enter the opt-in shop. These, these are not tools for you to plan what you're going to do. These are actual things that you can build your list with that actual couples can get help from. So let's get into what the opt-in shop has inside of it. So what are the products? What are the opt-ins? I'm going to share with you each opt-in and I'm going to tell you what it can do and how you can build your email list with this opt-in. Meaning I'm about to give you ideas for your newsletter, for blog posts, for just putting it on the homepage of your website, which any of these could be for that. So here we go. Let's dig in. The first one is a 12-month blank calendar. I've tested this on my couples and I love it. And what I have found that they are really liking using it for is for like a countdown calendar for their wedding. It's been super fun and they love it. I also use it for myself because it is blank. It doesn't have bride specific language on it. So I use it for myself as a business owner because hello, I have an editorial calendar. And but I also send it out to my couples and they love it so much because again, like they use it for a countdown calendar. Some people are actually recording like little memories, what happens each day during their planning process. Um, And some people are like, heck, I'm just using it as a regular calendar because it's cute. So that's the 12 month calendar. You can, here's a couple of ways you can use that. I'm actually going to click on this because this is, and you guys, these are all in the product descriptions. Like I do not leave you hanging at all. I don't just give you a photo of the product and say, okay, buy this. There is so much information in the product descriptions and there's a video. So head over to the opt-in shop on my website, shecreatesbusinesspodcast.com forward slash opt-in shop, or just go to shecreatesbusinesspodcast.com and click opt-in shop. Anyway, so the other thing is to like get more mileage out of this calendar and send it as a freebie every month. So do a blog post of maybe like, hey, it's January. If you're, you know, here's a couple, here's the five things you should be doing in January for your wedding. Also, here's a free January calendar printable. Hey, it's February. Here's the five things you need to be doing in February. Also, here's a free calendar printable, et cetera, et cetera. You guys, that is one blog post idea per month, 12 opt-ins a year. If you do it that way, you get tons of mileage out of it. Or you can go the route of saying, hey, here's a full 12 month calendar in one fell swoop and use it as a countdown calendar. Or you can write a blog post about the planning process from your perspective for whatever vendor you are and offer this calendar. 
right? So there's so many different ways you can use it. And if you remember, and if you don't, it doesn't matter. I'm going to link to it in the show notes. I wrote a blog post that had 60 ideas for opt-ins and content upgrades. You might recognize some in this opt-in shop. So even if you don't get anything from the opt-in shop, head over to that blog post. If you're listening and you're like, I love this idea, Kinsey, but I'm really going to try to create them myself. Love that. You should totally do that. Um, and But read that blog post because there's 60 ideas there to kind of get you going so you can create them if you want to. And they can also, I feel like those 60 ideas also double as blog post topics or email topics to your list, which we'll get into in just a second. And you can use those as different ways to get your brain flowing to say, okay, I'm going to get these opt-ins from Kinsey, these content upgrades, and then I'm going to go to this blog post just to get my juices flowing on how I can use them, right? So the next one, you guys, this is my baby. This is like my bread and butter, my little baby child. I love it so much. I'm just kidding. My real babies are my baby child. (laughs) Caitlin, my friend Caitlin, you know who you are. If you're listening, I completely stole the word baby child from you and I'm sorry. Or you're welcome. I don't know. Well, you decide. Anyway, the next one is a vendor meeting workbook. You guys, this is straight from a vendor to our couples because how amazing would it be if our couples were more educated and asked better questions when they had their vendor meetings so they knew all of the information up front? How educated, how like educate, how, wow, I'm stuttering. Think of the educated decisions that our couples could make if they had something like this when they visited every single vendor, even you, even me. These questions are not easy to answer sometimes. And I specifically put them on there because we are here to serve our couples and I want them to have this. This vendor meeting workbook is 93 pages. Yep, let that sink in. It's 93 pages. And the reason I wanted to include it is because it has all the major vendors, there's some vendors who are not included. So let me just preface this by saying, if you are a vendor, a type of vendor, and you don't see yourself in this vendor meeting workbook, shoot me an email. I'll add you. I included like the top 12 vendors or 11 vendors, like the big ones that you spend the most money on. Because at the end of the day, you don't know if somebody is going to, I don't know, get a Mrs. Box or whatever, and they don't really need to ask questions to those people. But when it comes to your photographer, your wedding planner, your venue, your caterer, your uh, specialty rental company, your bridal shop, your photo booth shop, your calligrapher or your hand letterer or your stationer, these are all big vendors that you're going to be spend. There are couples are going to be spending a lot of money with, and you know what? It's really important that our couples ask the right questions so they get the right information, and that's what the vendor meeting workbook is. The vendor meeting workbook has a list of questions for every single vendor, including space for the answers to those questions, including, and it also includes a pros and cons list after each vendor meeting, as well as any final thoughts or notes that they have. And then, of course, at the beginning, it includes like the date, you know, what the name of this vendor is and why you chose to meet with them in the first place, like what drew them what drew the couple to the vendor to even hey say, hey, I'd love to have a consultation. Now, we know as vendors that it's really important for people to look to, at a couple vendors. I believe that. If you don't believe that, then hey, that's, that's totally fine. But I do believe it's important to look at two or three vendors for each section. So that way you know that you are choosing the right person. I, I really do believe in choice. And I think you can't really find choice if you're not willing to kind of go the extra mile and have multiple consultations. That's just me. So I have included in the vendor meeting workbook three consultation pieces for each vendor. So I own a venue, so I'll just use venue as an example. So for there's three spaces for venue consultations. So any couple who downloads this workbook from you could go to three venues with the vendor meeting workbook that you download. Now, keep in mind, it's printable, so they can print as many as they want. So if they're type A and they want to meet with 10 venues, they totally can do that because they can just print more. But I've included three as part of the workbook as a whole, and I've done that for each vendor. So... That's the vendor meeting workbook. I absolutely love this workbook. I'm really proud of it and I hope you guys will love it too. Now, a couple of ways, again, using the vendor meeting workbook. Now, how can you make it go further for you? I said it was 93 pages. It includes a lot of vendor space. And so here's the thing. You could put this puppy on your homepage and say, hey, this is my 
like end all be all like big daddy opt-in for my home page for my about page put it on all of the most highly trafficked pages on your site so like your home page your about page maybe your wedding page um whatever's most highly trafficked for you right and this could be like your granddaddy opt-in it's 93 pages and you can just do that right or you can choose to get a little bit more mileage out of it. Not that you wouldn't get mileage out of it that way, but you can choose to do it a different way. And I hope we'll all choose, you know, something a little different. And uh, you can piece it out. You can piece out the ven- venues, write a blog post about venues or a couple of blog posts about venues and only include the venue meeting pages. You can, you know, continue that process for planners, photographers, floral designers, stationers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe interview a friend you have in the industry who is that vendor and then include that opt-in in the interview blog post right? So get a little bit more mileage out of it that way. Um, Do a whole interview series with all of these vendors, with multiple of each, you know, do a couple venue owners, do a couple if you, you know, I'll be it for you. Email me if you want me to interview me for your blog and then do the opt-in for venue owners. I'll do it. And I know some other venue owner friends. Um, Right? You, so you could do it that way. You could um, use it as an opt-in. And honestly, it's, here's, I love this idea too. If you're going to, um, if you're going to run Facebook ads or Pinterest ads to our, to your ideal clients, especially during engagement season here, you could use this puppy as the opt-in, as the free opt-in for your ad, right? Now, if you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start with that. You have got to listen to my episode back in August with Sarah Evans from Sarah Evans Weddings because we go through literally exactly how to use a free opt-in to trigger a Facebook ad so that people get something for free and you get their email list retargeting the whole bit. So seriously, take a listen to that and you could use it for this. You could use any of these opt-ins for that exact thing. So anyway, that's the vendor meeting workbook. Um, You guys, I hope you're loving this as much as I am. This has really been, ugh, it's just been seriously fun to put all of this, all of these ideas that have been in my head. It's been so great to see them come to life. Um, I'm going to try to go a little bit faster here because um, I want you to get into the opt-in shop and see what they're all about. Daily planning page for brides. That's exactly the way it sounds. It's just a cute single daily planning page. At the top, it says, I do to do's. Adorable. It also has like blank days until my wedding. And it's just a daily planner page. So they can print as many as they want. They can make it their own planner. Um, I've actually done that. I created some separate ones for myself that are not bride specific. And so I created my own planner. Anyway, if you want to see it, DM me, I'll show it to you. (laughs) But anyway, so they can create their own planner. They can print them out on the daily, you know, just so they know. There's a place for their top five. um, So there's a place for their daily schedule. There's a place for their, you know, today's top five, like the main things I need to do. And there's a place for vendor deposits slash payments that are due. I think that's really important. um, You know, as we're booking more and more brides for couples for next year, I've noticed that um, payment schedules are like one of the worst things that are uh, they're one of like the worst things that it, it's forgetful, right? Like, cause there's so many different payment schedules for so many different vendors. And so couples are like, oh my gosh, who's due now? Who's due now? So anyway, I included that specifically on the daily planning page cause I think it's really helpful. So hope you like it too. Um, the next one is vow writing worksheets. I love this. This is really more of a keepsake printable. It is 24 pages and it's for those folks who are going to write their own vows or who are maybe thinking about writing their own vows. And so I take them through a list of, we take them through a list of questions. And so some of the questions are, where did you meet? Uh, what are your, what are five words that describe your partner? Um, et cetera. And there's, you know, more questions. It's 24 pages total. And they are, you know, the goal of this vow writing worksheet is for them to kind of like get messy, get excited, do what they want in this in this big space that I have left for them to answer the question. Like, where did you meet? I don't want them to just write like a basketball game, like really get into their story because that's where true vows come from, right? They come from deep in the pits of your stomach. Like that sounded gross. I'm sorry. But they really do. Like, I man, you know, if you're married, you know, when you write your own vows, they come from somewhere else. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, and then after all of those questions have been answered, there is really cute lined space for the rough draft of their vows. And then um, a really cute lined space for the final draft. And they're both labeled that way. So rough draft, final draft. Keep in mind, Again, these are printable, so they can print out as many rough draft pages as they want, so they don't have to, um, you know, 
they don't have to be worried about messing up. And I actually show you in my video on the Val Writing Worksheets uh, product page how I actually printed a hardbound book for these um, just at Office Depot. It's amazing. Go check out that video. It seriously cost me 16 bucks. It's such a cool little keepsake. Uh, I think you're going to like it and it's hardbound. And so they're writing their vows and that's really a keepsake, right? And so I love that. So go take a peek at that. Um, the next one is a guest list worksheet. So I really enjoy the, I really like these too. Um, this is basically just like list mode, like I have um, separated out all of the different sections kind of of our, each person's life, you know, like when you're coming together as a couple, you each have your own life, right? Like you have your own life, you have your own friends, you have your own family, and you're trying to put them all together and figure out what your guest list is. And so there are some questions, important questions that go along with doing your guest list. I think that can be something really challenging for some people is who do we invite? Who do we leave out? Who do we not invite? And there's some, you know, kind of easy questions you can ask yourself to make sure that you're inviting the right people, that our couples are inviting the right people and that they feel great about their guest list. And that's what the guest list worksheets are for. Um, so we go through like our parents, friends, our acquaintances together, extended family, our family friends, our community friends, like my side, your side, who are just, you know, people on each person's side. And then at the beginning of those worksheets, though, are those questions I just talked about, like, are you going to regret it if this person isn't there? Are there parents you know, finances involved? That's a great question that sometimes people are too afraid to ask. Like, do you need to invite some people because your parents are paying for the meals and they want to invite people? That's legitimate, right? We know that. Do they? I don't know. So I put that question in there. Um, so anyway, guest list, guest list worksheet, excuse me, worksheets, those are 20 pages. And again, all of these I really designed so you can give them all away as one big opt-in. Um, so you could give away a 20 page guest list worksheet as an opt-in, or you can kind of break it up and get a little bit more mileage out of it. You can even use these guys within your email list. So as you start building your email list or the email list you already have, they are now, they're your tribe. They are the people who have raised their hand and said, I want to be on your list and I care what you have to say. So please send me awesome stuff. So why not send them some of these printables? They don't need to opt in again. They've already opted in. So reward them for taking that action by sending some of these printables to them, you know, free of charge, basically, like free of their email address. They've already opted in, right? So if you already have a list, boom, there's another way to give the, that list some amazing content. Okay. The final one that I have for today, there are six in each color. That's right. Created these in five colors, um, is a weekly planner. Okay. This is, I love this weekly planner. Again, created some for myself. Go check out the video on the weekly planner page printable. I also had some like physical products made of this. They're not for sale in the shop, so don't freak out. Um, but I had some like physical products made for myself of the weekly planner because I love it so much and it's not bride specific or couple wedding specific, but they can definitely use it. So it's one page. It's a weekly planner. It says weekly to do's at the top. I super love it. It's amazing. And the reason I included something like this is because people don't always want like wedding centric things, but they still need planning tools or organizational tools. And that's why I had these created. So that is it. Those are the products that I have right now. Many more to come. Don't you even worry. Um, that's a lot. It's a lot, you guys. 93 pages in that vendor meeting workbook. That is a ton of content for you to split up and, and make your own. Um, I have put these in five different colors, trying to, these are all very basic colors, but it's because I wanted to hopefully kind of hit on each person's brand color Oh, in a way. I know we all have multiple brand colors and I can't hit on every one. Um, there are a few colors in here though that I was thinking about. So if you're a color, like if you're purple, would you guys email me? Purple, purple people. If you have purple in your branding, email me because I was thinking of creating these printables in, in purple, but I didn't know if I wanted to do that or like a purple-ish or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, you can get all of these in black, navy blue, forest green, blush, or moonstone gray. Those are the five colors they come in right now. So for example, my brand colors are a couple of different navy spectrum colors for Vista View events, that is. Navy spectrum colors, gray, and also coral. So for my brand, I could use my navy, my moonstone gray, and maybe blush. 
Um, it's not quite our coral color. Ours is like a little bit deeper. So I probably wouldn't use blush, but I could definitely use navy and the moonstone gray. And then I think anybody can use black, right? Black is black. That's why I added it. It's amazing. We can all use it and I certainly would. Um, but yeah, so let me know what other colors you're thinking. And uh, honestly, let me know like, hey, it'd be awesome if you had this opt-in. Can you please create that for me? I would purchase it from you and I will 100% do that. Just shoot me an email. Um, okay, so I want to answer some other questions. I have sent these on to some other wedding pros before I launched the opt-in shop, and they came back to me with some really amazing questions. But there's also some questions I just asked myself. And so the first question that I got was, you should make these editable. What if you made them editable? And I specifically didn't do that. You know why, you guys? Because then it makes the done-for-you part of my opt-in shop irrelevant. And I truly want you to get to the mechanics of building your email list, just like I want to get there. I seriously do not want you to spend time editing this PDF. It's not for resale. You have to give it away for free. It's all white label. It doesn't say she creates business. It doesn't say Kinsey. It doesn't say anything. It's completely irrelevant and it already looks like your business. Like that's why I put them in five different colors so you can match it as close to your business as possible. Um, I don't want you to waste time on that. I created these. I think they're really valuable. If you don't think they're valuable and you want to waste time editing, you should create your own. Like I truly believe in that. I want these to be for people who are ready to build their email list and who know that they need to be spending their time serving their couples and not editing the laurel on the 12 month calendar page. You know what I mean? Like we don't have time for that. That's why I hired a designer. <laughs> Um, so that's the answer to that question. Will I ever make them editable in the future? Maybe, maybe I will. I'm not sure. If I get enough requests for that, I might. But at the moment, I really want you guys to just take action. That is the thing. Just take action. Let me give you an example about that. Like we don't need, a, like I said earlier, we don't need another like editorial calendar template to tell us if you have, because if you have this template, that does not mean that you're going to build your email list. It's just another template. There's nothing to fill it up. There's no information in there. And you're not building your email list. You just have a template. I'll give you a really good example. In my mastermind a couple months ago, uh, one of the gals in my mastermind really wanted to start blogging as well, like all of us, right? And so she told us her goal, which we all loved and agreed with. And very quickly, the conversation spun out into you should buy CoSchedule, which is a monthly subscription or like a pay yearly payment. Uh, you should buy CoSchedule. It's this editorial calendar system and, and it will totally help you organize your blog posts. And like the conversation went on like this for a while. And we finally had to say, OK, listen, you don't need CoSchedule because spoiler alert, you don't have any blog posts to put in that editorial calendar. Like if you get co-schedule, it doesn't make you a better blogger. It just means you have co-schedule. If you have actually information to put in that ed editorial calendar, that's what co-schedule is, by the way, it's an online editorial calendar. Great. Then you maybe you should use that. But honestly, if you're just starting out or you're just getting back into blogging or what have you, then you know what? You can make it without buying another subscription based service. Actually, a lot of us could do that in our businesses for way longer than we think. So that's what the point of the opt in shop is. And that's why I don't have editable products at the moment, because I don't want you to be don't be the co schedule tool. You don't need those tools. You don't need to go edit these tools. They're already done for you. Go build your email list, put them into your email list subscription service and start offering them to your couples right? I hope that made sense. I'm so excited about this and that's why I'm like kind of being aggressive. So I hope you love it as much as I do. Okay. Why do you need these? Why do you need these? Do you? I don't know. If you are not interested in building your email list at all, you don't need the opt-in shop. I'll just tell you that right now. You don't need it. So see you next week in the next episode. I'm just kidding. I'll see you on Thursday. Um, but if you want to build your email list, if you know that your email list is the one thing that you will own that has all of your contact information on it and you want to serve them well and you want to sell them a product, your services, your planning services, your floral services, your venue services, etc., then you need an email list and these content upgrades and opt-ins can help you serve up amazing content that will encourage people to opt into that list. And furthermore, they will also help you further serve that list. Like I mentioned, you can break these out and just serve your email list with some of these opt-ins if you want to. You don't have to just put them on your website or in blog posts. You can serve your email list with them. Plus, I'm sure you have a million other ideas for what to email your list. And if you don't, email Kinsey because I will give you some ideas. Um, so 
here's here's a question that I asked myself as I was creating these. I was like, okay, here's a question though. What if everyone just has the same opt-in? Like Kinsey's created this opt-in shop and that's amazing, but now we have all the same opt-ins. So that's not amazing. You know what is amazing, you guys? We are all operating around the world. I have listeners from around the world. We are not all wedding professionals in Colorado. If we're all wedding professionals in Colorado, that might be a problem, but we're not. And even if we are wedding professionals in Colorado, we have different thoughts. So the way I write about venues or the way I write about being, you know, how, why I think our couple should hire a wedding planner or why I think they need a professional photographer is 100% not the way you're going to write about venues or wedding planners or photographers. Furthermore, again, we're not in all in the same area. So if I am a venue owner in Colorado, my brides and my couples are looking for venues in Colorado. They don't care about your venue in Florida or in Maine or in Texas. They don't care. They're not looking in Florida or Maine or Texas. They're looking in Colorado because that's where my venue is and that's where my ideal client is. So I don't need to be worried about brides looking for venues in Texas and neither should you. You are maybe also wondering, okay, well, I am a traveling photographer or I will send my invitations anywhere. Good on you. I think that's great. But maybe all invitations designers don't send their invitations everywhere. Maybe they only send them to like the tri-state area. Maybe they only send them to, you know, Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska. Maybe they only work in California. You know what I'm saying? So we're all different. We're all different. We don't write the same way. We don't have the same list. We don't have the same ideal client. And my couples in Colorado are not looking for you in Virginia and vice versa. Your couples in Virginia do not care what I am doing over in Colorado, America. And so the chances of them seeing this um, pretty much slim to none. Also, if you want further proof that it's okay if we have similar opt-ins, think of all the social media planners you can find for free on Pinterest. But they're all still rocking it and killing the game, right? Because we don't care. We all want the same thing. There you go. Okay. So I answered that question for myself because I was really worried about it. And uh, I told Raina, my friend Raina, that I was like, I don't know. And then I was like, wait a minute. People in Colorado don't care what you're doing in Virginia. And she was like, there you go. That's what she said. There you go. So, okay. Finally, a couple of other things. I've mentioned this a few times. There are videos on my product pages so that you can further explore. There's lots of details on the product pages. There's also some videos so you can further explore these opt-ins and content upgrades and really get an idea of what they look like. And I'm super excited because I'm only telling you guys this. This is why I've been sharing November 21st with you because you are getting the first. It's open. It's ready. It's ready for business. But nobody else gets to know until... um, Cyber Friday. I'm an idiot. Black Friday. No one else gets to know until Black Friday. So you guys have three days. Yeah, three full days, almost four days um, to get in there and shop to your little heart's content at these prices. So this sale, the prices that they are now are really low. They are going to go through Cyber Monday and hooray. I'm so excited. And you're the first to know about them. No one else is going to know about them until Friday. Um, this upcoming Friday. And then the prices are going to go up after Cyber Monday. I'm, I'm really proud of these products, and but I wanted everybody to get in on them at a really low rate. And uh, so head in there, get what you need, and uh, there's bundles. So you can actually get all six products in each color or in one color. So you can get like the black bundle, the blush bundle, the navy blue bundle, whatever is your brand colors. Um, you can get all of those bundles for $49 um, a piece. So if you want like black and blush, they're $49 each, right? And um, that's over 30% off. So 49 bucks over 30%, so over 30% off, super awesome. You get six opt-ins. That seriously includes the 93-page vendor meeting workbook, the vow writing worksheets, guest list worksheets, the printable planning pages, the daily ca- or the monthly calendar. Hooray. Um, really excited about that. You guys, can I just tell you this final thing? I should have maybe started with this, but um, I'm going to end with it because I just, I'm excited about this the most. I... Okay, the opt-in shop, obviously, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's great. I can't wait to continue to add more opt-ins and content upgrades in there for you. But I knew when I created it that it had to mean something else. Like, it had to mean something else. It had to be tied to something that was bigger than the shop and bigger than the podcast and, you know, bigger than the pro, you know, bigger than myself, really. Um, And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I I know that... um, you know, I could have picked like a charity or something that I believe in to donate to as far as like nonprofits is, nonprofit is concerned. 
But that didn't feel right. And and not because I don't think those are good and valuable and true things. I really do. But I couldn't f- pick just one that really felt aligned with the opt-in shop. I couldn't. And that's the truth. And I, and I don't mind sharing that with you because I know we're, you know, I know we're friends and supporters here. So I couldn't, I couldn't think of one that really felt aligned with me. Not that I don't support things, but um, that's the truth. So I sat down and I was, you know, kind of thinking through this, like, how can I make the shop mean more? And I figured it out. <sighs> you know, if you've listened to the podcast for any amount of time that I started this podcast last year in 2016, if you're listening to this in 2017, I started this podcast in the middle of 2016, right after the Creative at Heart Conference. And the Creative at Heart Conference is run by Cash Moyer, and um, it was here in Denver. And I went to the conference, and it was one of the most amazing experiences I have had in my business. I made amazing friends. All my very first guests were from that conference. They said yes to me. They only knew me for like two days, and then they were like, sure, I will come talk to you for 45 minutes how amazing is that? That's the kind of connection that I made there. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, if I hadn't have gone to that conference and been supported by all of those women then and now a year and a half later, I would not have started this podcast. I wouldn't have. I'd been sitting on it for two years. And that's when it hit me. A scholarship. A scholarship for women who want to go to the Creative at Heart Conference because I want people to go to the Creative at Heart Conference. If you are a creative woman who owns her own business and has been wanting to go to the Creative at Heart Conference or you know someone who would be a great fit, the opt-in shop is supported 10% of all sales. Every single sale made in the opt-in shop goes to the She Creates Business Scholarship and that scholarship is going to cover 100% of a ticket to the Creative at Heart Conference in November 2018. I am so, so, so honored to say that and just so proud and excited. Um, Of course, I have huge, huge goals for the scholarship. I want it to support even more than that. I would love to cover 100% of the whole trip, you know, travel, airfare, like travel, food, all of that. And I know I will get there. I know we will get there. But for now, it's going to cover the ticket cost of one woman And there's an application process for the scholarship. Uh, The application process will be, uh, you know, only Kat and I will ever see it, Catch Moria and myself. And uh, yeah, if you are interested, take a peek at that page on my website. If you know someone who might be interested, send that link to them. Uh, There's a place to sign up for the wait list. Um, As you're listening to this, information for the 2018 conferences for Creative at Heart haven't been launched quite yet. So there's a there's a wait list and like a it's not a wait list like in order. It's just a hey, notify me when you're ready to take applications and, and we sure will. So I'm really excited by that. I'm really, really glad that this conference or this conference, I'm really glad that this opt-in shop is going to support another woman who is building a business, who is building her vision for success, who's building her vision for what she wants her life to look like. And truly to me, I'm excited to support that because rather than just supporting one cause, one nonprofit, I can send multiple women because I have big dreams for this scholarship. I can send multiple people off into the world who are going to build their own dreams and their own visions and they are very likely have their own causes. So instead of just supporting one cause, I feel like we're supporting a lot of causes because we're supporting a lot of women and a lot of different humans and a lot of different individuals, right? Awesome. So thank you guys so much for letting me share this with you. I seriously want this to help you and I want you to build your email list. I want to build my email list and we're going to do it, you guys. Like we are doing it. 2018 is totally our year to build our email list. I'm going to constantly be adding opt-in ideas and content upgrades. If there's something you want my designer to design and me to put it in the shop, you just email me, sister. Like, you don't wait. Just email me and say, girlfriend, this is a good idea and you should design this and we will get it in there for you. That is what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Um, If you have a question like, hey, I don't know how I could use this in my business. I don't really know how I could build my email list, especially if you have a brick and mortar shop. I have ideas for you. Email me. Um, You guys are the best. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks for listening today. And uh, I will see you very soon. Or maybe I'll see you in my inbox. Love you guys. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.